Hello and welcome to this week's EMBN show. And on today's show, we'll be looking at new motors and bikes from Panasonic. Checking out Captain Shred. And also the reasons why this year is the year that you should be buying your first e-bike. So new year, new challenges and new you. And maybe 2019 is gonna be the year you buy your first e-bike. There could be some things holding you back such as peer pressure or indeed the false claims that e-bikes actually make you unfit. Absolute rubbish, you're on there, you're gonna get way fitter because you're gonna be riding your bike even more than you would do your regular bike. So the four things then why you should be buying an e-bike in 2019. The first thing is they are simply faster. Yeah, you've got that 250 watt motor on tap. As soon as you press that button, you're gonna feel like an Olympic athlete out on the trails. Yeah. But it's not just about scooting up hills quicker than people on conventional bikes, although you could do that if you wanted to, but it's not about that. It's about riding different hills in different places and uh, just exploring uh, different places out there a bit more than you might do on a conventional bike. And of course you can do it as fast or as slow as you want to, you know, how um, hard you make that ride is totally up to you. You can cruise around with it in eco, get the most out of your battery, or you can put it in turbo if you've only got a short time to ride, get out there and smash that loop out. So that's a real good thing about them. Yeah, and we're talking speed. So one of the big things about speed mm. is going downhill. Definitely. Now, a lot of people think uh, e-bikes are slower down because the increased weight but that's actually not true because the increased weight on an e-bike is going to provide you with much more grip than on a conventional bike. On a conventional bike on really rough, rocky, rooty ground, they're going to be bouncing around quite a lot. But on an e-bike, incredible stability, right Definitely, Chris? yeah. And I think the momentum that they hold as well, especially through those rough sections like Steve mentioned, on a traditional bike, those rocks and roots are going to sort of slow you down every single hit with that weight of the e-bike, it simply just plows through that stuff. And you know, I think trail yeah. speed, I feel way faster on my e-bike. So basically, e-bikes are faster everywhere. Uphill, downhill, it's the best tool for the job. Yeah. Number two is you're not going to be affected by the weather. No one's affected by wet weather, are they? What weather are we talking? Raining? Windy? Uh, we've had a fair weather bikers. Yeah, a few of those around, I suppose. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, wind, rain, snow, cold. It actually inspires me to get out on my e-bike, I think, when it's raining. I actually have the best rides when it's been rainy, the, the trails are all slippy and muddy. That's the time to be out there on e-bikes, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've ridden in, in rain and wind most of my life, but for some reason, I don't yeah, I seem to be as scared to no. go out in the wind and rain on an e-bike as on a it's conventional weird, bike. Yeah. I don't know why it is. Maybe it's because yeah. it's easier to get through the elements on an e-bike mm. and all those slippy banks, and yeah. they're not going to be so difficult on e-bikes. You get yeah. a bit more power There's there to get up them. Nothing worse. I think our winter riding reminds me of going through like these boggy trails on a normal mountain bike, getting all that clay all built up around your wheels. I'm sure we've all been there <laughs> where your wheels won't even turn because you're going so slow up those climbs that your mm. wheels actually jam up. But on the e-bike, you're going way faster. You don't get that build up of mud and yeah. it just keeps the flow. Yeah, winter is a great time for riding e-bikes, that's for sure. Now, the third thing I think is really important when it comes to your purchase of your e-bike is that you'll probably be riding with far more people than you have ever before. Mm. And people from all kinds of backgrounds and uh, younger people, older people, um, fit people, unfit people, people who are heavier, people who are lighter. And that's the great thing about mm. e-bikes is that it's all about sharing that riding mountain bike experience. Yeah, I think uh, just going back to last weekend, I was out on the uh, Saturday with my dad. We did a big cross country loop and he's up with me, you know, exploring all these new places that we never would have ridden, mm. especially at the same speed. You know, we're going around talking the whole way around, real social experience. And next day I'm doing laps at the bike park with two, you know, younger riders. Mm. In the, you know, it just becomes a whole social sort of experience. You know, we're going up and down those hills, talking to each other, having fun on the bikes rather than, you know, trying to climb up there at two mile an hour, pushing our bikes up yeah. around the woods. Just... Yeah, unites all the generations, and like I said, it's all about sharing. And finally, the fourth thing, for finally, the fourth thing is, uh, I think it's, you know, stop suffering and start living, basically, Chris. Definitely. Uh, and it's fun. I mean, it can be painful if you wanted it to, yeah. but the choice is there for you. I mean, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, you can you can scoot up a hill at, in flat out in turbo, but you can also ride in eco mode and make it a really challenging and physical ride. Yeah, I genuinely think that for 80% of people out there, the e-bike is actually a better tool for mountain biking than the standard mountain bike. To, to enjoy mountain biking, I think 
think you've got to be really, really fit. And if you're not fit, it isn't fun, is it, at all? There are lots of barriers to mountain biking, that's for Definitely, sure. Definitely, yeah. And I think if you haven't got the time to get out and do those big rides and be fit on your mountain bike, then you're not going to enjoy mountain biking. So yeah. an e-bike just gives you that instant key to fitness and it makes mountain biking what we all perceive it as, is a real fun sport. But it's bloody hard if you're not fit. Yeah. So get out there, get down the shop, have a look around some bikes. There's some good full suspension bikes there starting around about... Uh, two and a half to three thousand pounds. I know it's a lot of money, but uh, if you're going to go mountain biking, you know, really off-road conditions, then that's a good choice. Uh, otherwise, if you can want to simply be riding fire roads or uh, or a single track smooth trails, then maybe a hardtail is a is a good way to go to. So we're hitting the trails today with Jasper Penton on his Cannondale Matera Neo 2. Let's take a closer look at his bike. So this is a size large aluminium frame. It's got 130mm travel, match it with a 140mm travel fork on the front. It's all powered by that Bosch Performance Line CX motor and Cannondale have actually manufactured their own mount for this uh, engine. It's called the SI mount that allows Cannondale to actually rotate that end, uh, the motor slightly and allow for a shorter chainsail on this bike. So a really manoeuvrable bike. So the big change on the 2019 Matera is that internal battery. So it's all gone internal now. They've opted for the Bosch in-tube battery on this 504 watt hours. So a lot of range out on that trail too. It cleans up the lines of the bike a lot and makes it look a lot cleaner. So really nice thing that Cannondale do on all of their bikes is actually from the cheapest option, the Neo 3 up to the Cannondale Neo, it's actually they use that same battery and motor size. The battery is the same size on the high end as it is on the low end. Obviously all matched up with that. Bosch Performance Line CX motor. It's a really nice move there from Cannondale. The whole bike's really attractive package. SRAM NX Eagle drivetrain, Maxxis tires front and rear, and some nice solid dependable 650B wheels from WTB. So a nice solid dependable bike there from Cannondale. So we don't see a lot of Panasonic motors here on the show, but there's a few new bikes come out this month with that new Panasonic motor, right, Steve? Yeah, it's all based around a uh, unit called the GXO, mm. which produces 90 newton meters of torque and weighs in at 2.95 kilos, which actually puts it alongside the Bros Mag S in terms of weight and also the output on it. Um, and the good thing about the GXO motor, it produces a constant power over a wide range of cadences. And um, I've seen a few bikes, Chris. I think uh, the first up is the Flyer, the Flyer mm. Uprock 7. That's good. 160 mil travel, uh, comes in about 4,300 euros. Um, and um, yeah, some really nice, nice touches on it. It's got a nice display in the center of the bike. It's got aluminum cover to to uh, protect the motor nice. uh don't know much about flyer really i know it's a swiss company and they do make quite a lot of v bikes but i think it's the up rock sam which is you know like i said the 160 mil travel bike comes in a wide range of specifications which um there's something in there for everyone and i think the pricing is good um come in five ranges from five size ranges sorry from small up to xl and the good news for the tall people is that the XL comes at 490 millimeter reach, which is which is a good size for someone over six foot tall. But from across the pond, Chris, yeah, the, the Van Dessel. Van Dessel, not to be confused with Van Diesel, but Van Dessel, yeah, they've launched some new bikes, the Captain Shred. So wow. that's looking pretty good. What do you think of the name of that, Captain Shred? I don't know, the whole Van Dessel thing's a bit different as well, but huh? Captain, Captain Shred, I think Van Dessel. I like it. It's I mean, cool, it's it? a good spec on the bike. Yeah. It looks like the angles are good, it's very neat. Does big That's internal battery, obviously yeah. that Panasonic uh, new motor as well, GXO. Yeah. So looking pretty. I think attractive. it's cool. I think it's really good to, to you know we're we're hearing from um, from more companies like Panasonic because it's a really really big, big, big company. Name. Panasonic, big, big name. Yeah. yeah, be exciting to see what they are. They're already bringing a strong motor to the game already. You know their first yeah. effort. So yeah, I think along with those other motors, you've got Continental as well with all their mm -hmm. experience and yeah. money coming into it. Panasonic yeah. and obviously the big players as well. So it's yeah. exciting year for e-bike motors. Good stuff. Tissues quarries are a great place to be brushing up on those skills on the e-bikes. That's because they're littered with things just like this scree slope. Let's take a look at how we tackle it, a scree slope. When you arrive at the top of the scree slope, it's quite natural to be scared, thinking, oh my God, what the hell am I doing? But this is where you really need to commit. As soon as you drop into that slope, things will actually start uh, relaxing. You'll get more into the flow of it and just enjoy the ride down. When you first come into it, it's really important to stay committed as you roll into this part of it. Just learn the grip levels first on your first run. Go down, just get your weight back, dig the back wheel in, modulate the front brake, 
You don't want to skid so much, but just try and modulate your brake in front and rear the whole way down. Keep your weight back, especially on the screw slopes, because they can be quite soft, so actually that front wheel can dig in. Sometimes check over the handlebars. So really get back behind the bike, let the bike move around. On the approach to the screw slope, just make sure you've selected the right gear. You want something that's going to give you a bit of drive if needed. Come in with enough speed to crest over that uh, into the slope, over the crest nicely. You don't want to be braking and coming in there too slow, so it can really uh, make a loss of balance. Come in, committed, work your way down the bank. Let's give it a go. You get your weight back. It's nice to that back here. Then. Once you've got that basic technique dialed, it's time to have fun with it. Carve your way down there, just like a snowboarder, holding onto that back brake, digging that back wheel in, snaking your way down, carving big dirt waves. So it's time for Climb of the Week, and we got this one sent in from Barry. Not Barry South Wales, Barry, as in Mr. Barry. Yeah. It's from Inverness and it shows his 14-year-old uh, lightweight daughter. Uh, I don't know whether uh, your daughter has taken your bike, Barry, or not, but uh, she seems to be having a great time. I can relate to this totally because I've often taken my 15-year-old uh, daughter out and she rides my e-bike and absolutely smokes me up the hills. And uh, it's great to see you out in the woods having fun with your family, Barry. Keep it going. Okay, so it's time for some feedback. We put out a load of videos over the Christmas period and we've got loads of different people commenting. And the big thing uh, that I heard was Steve wanted to talk to me a little bit about the hardtail video. <laughs> what's, that, what's going on, Steve? What's the problem? Uh, Chris, it's, I'm really sorry. I've got to pull you up on the hardtail video. I thought uh, you might. I've got to pull you up. Um, a couple of things you said. Um, yep. fires you, hardtails fire you out of a corner mm -hmm. way better than a full suspension bike. Yep. Well, on that trail. Which you didn't say. I mean, you're actually on a BMX track. You're on a mm. you're on a surface mountain bike, bike trail, trail right? Bike trail. With berms, which if you think about it, if you're on a BMX bike, a BMX bike would have fired you at that corner. Yeah. So um, I think I think you need to be specific about the type of terrain you're riding specific, on. Specific, not specific. Specific. Right? <laughs> uh, you know, if you if you, you know, a hardtail won't fire out of a big rooty corner. I can tell you that. But not everyone's riding big rooty corners, are they? Yeah. Some people are riding these nice smooth trails. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing is, you said that you feel you felt connected going up. Yeah. Again, um, you're actually riding a smooth trailer pill. Yeah, I know, but you know what I mean. Like, if you if you wheel spin on a full suspension bike, it's more. I think it's more direct with a hardtail. As soon as that, you're more in touch with the rear wheel. I think. Well, yes, and my point is, you feel in touch with the rear wheel yeah. because and because what's happening is your back wheel is sliding a lot more yeah. than it is on a full suspension bike. So the point is, the full suspension bike is going to give you more grip on a climb than a hardtail is. Do you know, it's all good banter. We want to hear you. Obviously, there's, it's, it's great because when we did a hardtail versus full suspension, there was, there was banter in favour of full suspension. And when Chris did his hardtail, everyone was pro hardtail. But it's not about me and Chris. What about what you guys have been saying over the last month? And the first thing I think we need to do is enlarge the size of that text because I cannot see that. Yeah, we've had this one in from Wayne Car Creek. E-bikes take away almost all the downsides of full suspension. I used to hate full suspension until I got an e-bike. I got a hardtail mid-drive e-bike thinking it would be the best thing for him. Uh, I then discovered it would be a massive mistake. I'll never buy anything but a full suspension e-bike from now on. Traded out within months. Love my hardtail conventional bike and will never buy a full suspension conventional. Two totally different scenarios. If you haven't ridden the e-bike hardtail versus full suspension, you need to before you come to an occlusion. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess I guess it comes down to where you ride, right? Definitely, yeah. Uh, but I'm glad uh, I'm glad that you're happy with your both bikes. That's mm. uh, you're a very, very fortunate character. Drago's Ion reinstalled some of my motivation on my track profile hardtail back in the bike park. Thank you for too long. I've cringed at Steve's hardtail unfair and prejudiced comments. <laughs> Oh, it's a hit to the heart. Hit there, to the it? heart, isn't it? Almost as if hardtails are not competitive real bikes. I love my track hardtail. Thank you again. You I tell go. you what, I'll give Chris a hug for you. <laughs> <Cheers>. <laughs> and that's it for your comments this week. Uh, keep them coming in. Uh, it's always good to have uh, banter with you guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, can't wait to the next hardtail video, Chris. <laughs> 
Okay, time for the big blue marble. Spinning big blue marble. And this week is from a place which I can't pronounce, Chris. Shh. The Chilcotins? Chilcotins. Chilcotins. Where are the Chilcotins, Chris? No idea, Steve. You can no idea. Somewhere, Got somewhere. Canada somewhere, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know what? We babble on about you know e-bike adventures all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, some wildlife photographers yeah. from IFHT Films. Um, they're riding some tracks here, which I, I think you know they they say they're going to places they've never been to before. Mm -hmm. Which and an e-bike has allowed them to get those places. Definitely. I think it's and a pretty cool video. Cruising around and they're saying that the e-bike is actually the best tool for the job. They yeah. were trying to get to these remote places and they're talking about parking and carrying all their gear in on foot yeah. or riding dirt bikes in, you know, like motocross bikes, things like that. But they found the e-bike is actually the best tool for the job. Nice and quiet. Yeah, yeah. nice and quiet, no trail damage. Yeah. It is literally the best tool for the job. And, uh, you know, because, you know, uh, a while back we looked at Jimmy Chin, the adventurer and photographer Jimmy Chin, who's up in the mountains using his e-bike to get to those new places. Uh, how long before the likes of David Attenborough is using an e-bike to mm. go and chase gorillas through the, through the Serengeti? Mist. Or are there no gorillas in the Serengeti, is there? I have no idea. Wildebeest? Maybe. Huh? I don't know. I've never been to the Serengeti. Anyway, guys, exploring the Chilcotins. Looks a great video. Check it out. Uh, in the meantime, back over in Ireland, we've got this uh, photograph in from Jane, who's out on her... Um, I can't see that from her. What bike is it? Oh, it's a cube. It's a cube? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So Jane in Northern Ireland, uh, apparently Jane's the first uh, female in that part of the world to own an e-bike. So Jane, thanks for sending your photograph in. Uh, keep uh, sending some more pictures of your action on your e-bike adventures. So what have we got coming out on the EMBN channel this week? Well, on Friday, we've got a video called Spinning versus Grinding. When to use a high cadence on your e-bike and when maybe to grind it out. And we shot it in absolutely slashing it, it down weather. Worst day ever, wasn't it? It was Rain absolutely was. horrendous. Uh, and then Sunday? Sunday is, uh, the, we went to the place where electricity is yeah. made up, an electric mountain. and. Uh, Chris and myself uh, rode some pretty scary slate oh, ascents. Big incline, sketchy descents, really and sketchy. another really nasty day of Welsh weather. <laughs> so look out for that one on Sunday as well. <laughs> no, do not miss, do not miss Electric Mountain. It's a beauty. It's time for the bike vault. <laughs> Let's get into it. <laughs> We've got this one in from James with a spectral on. He's out in Code Brennan. Code a Brennan. Sorry. North Wales. Enjoying the ride to the new e-bike earlier last year. Yeah, I love this. One of, one of the UK's oldest mountain bike trails mm -hmm. on one of the newest e-mountain bikes on his canyon. Looks really enhanced, that 29er front wheel and that 27.5 rear on that, doesn't it? But look, I think that, that's that's a moment in time. E-bikes in Clyde Brennan, super nice. Super nice. Ooh, nice. that's a nice background, isn't it? Where's yeah. that from then, Chris? This is from Peak District. Yeah, Cutgate Peak District. In mm. from Ian on this Kinevo TLD edition. So it's got Troy Lee graphics, really nice looking bike. Come on. 2018. Come on. What are you waiting for? Middle it's of nowhere and he nice. smashes his mech off nice. just after Oh no! Yeah, so you have oh. to single speed it on the way home. Oh, crikey. Wow. So you gave him a super nice Super look. nice. Not for, not for the smash the mech off, but making for... the effort of getting up there. Yeah, yeah. Got this one in from Scott Trek PF7, Sun Valley, Arizona. Been there, Steve? Uh, I've been around not far from there, yeah. He said this is his first ride without breaking the law. So <laughs> effectively, January the 1st, e-bikes are now allowed to ride on all county trails. Yes! Don't tell anyone I've been riding them since I got my e-bike. <laughs> so, good to see, yeah, it's all getting past and getting bigger and bigger out there. Should we reserve this one? Mm. Or should we, I'm not feeling super nice, but... I think it'll look, I'm going to give them super nice get yes, out there. Yes, get out there. Rebel, really like. Yeah, pioneering the trails. Jerry, I think this is the guy that we met at Wind Hill a while ago, do you think? On his Merida E160. Merida. Merida? Merida. My first bike was Merida. Was it? Uh, in uh, Israel on a hill by the Mediterranean. But yum. Oh, this is proving tough going this week, Chris. I mean, these are... I think you selected these ones out. Didn't I you? didn't. No, honestly, they just, they just, as they come out of the machine. Beautiful sunny day after many rainy days riding along the hills. Doesn't even look rainy, does it? Dry. Mm. Jerry. Oh. Okay. Only thing is, is that the horizon is cutting through the top tube. So that's the only reason I feel that it should be reserved. Nice. Nice. Harshly. 
Oh, I got puppy. Dogs. We always like dogs in the bike vault. So this is. And we have to be consistent. We have to be consistent because again, horizons cutting through the this top. This is from Carl Logser. Yeah, Langset Reservoir. Specialized Canevo. Oh, what's the puppy called? Uh, it doesn't say. What do you reckon it's called? Puppy. Pup. Nice. For nice. nice. Right, moving on. This is from Alan Ooh. KTM Messina Cap Capau yeah. two seven four Hamsley Forest County Durham. Yeah. Is that, is that what? Well, I'll let you say. We decide. I'm going to give him a nice as well. Okay, Not very inspiring back, on. background on that one. Ooh, crikey, you got off, off track there, haven't you, uh, Stephen, in North East Scotland? Just getting into mountain biking, it's great, but almost uh, as much fun going uphill on e-bike as it's flying back down. I know that feeling. 2019 mm. High Bike Enduro 3.0 as well. Nice. You've seen too many of them. Nice. Thinking nice or super yeah, nice? Yeah, well, that's nice, isn't it? Nice. What's well, it to you? Nice, I like Yeah, nice. This one in from Michael, Trek Powerflight FS5, Burwood Beach, also known as Glenrock Beach, New South Wales, Australia. Oh. Left or right about e bike. The thing Australia. is, are we biased because we want to, we like all these pictures in the sun? I know, we're just sat here in the rain and the <laughs> gloom. Uh, exploring the countryside for new places to ride with friends. Mm -hmm. it's lovely. I mean, it's got to be a super nice, right? Sun, e bike, sand. <laughs> And that's it, we're out of the bike vault, but if you want to keep sending your bikes in, drop into the uploader service, the address is on the screen now, get your bikes in, we'll give you a nice or super nice. So there you go guys, we've fired into 2019 in fine form. Uh, if you are on the edge, if you are teetering on the edge of buying your first e-mountain bike and have any doubts, please get in touch and we'll do our best do it, do it. to help you and tip you over the edge, tip you over that, tip the balance in favour of your first e-bike. So yeah, please, please get in touch. For now, if you want some inspiration, check out Chris Smith's uh, e-bike commute challenge. And if you want to see all the riding we were on about on hardtails uh, earlier on in the show, check out these videos too, how hard you can go on a hardtail, pretty and hard. Yeah, don't forget, you can like, share, and subscribe to EMVM.